Good afternoon. It's now 1.20, and so the Board of Trustees of the Harris County Department of Education is now convened in a board meeting on Wednesday, January 18th, 2023, in the boardroom at 6300 Irvington Boulevard, Houston, Texas, and as I said, it's 1.20 p.m. I wish to extend a warm welcome to everyone present this meeting, to this meeting of the Board of Trustees. As trustees, we are here to set goals, listen to reports from the superintendent and his staff, approve budgets, contracts, personnel appointments, and make policy for the district. It is not the role of the board to make day-to-day -day operational decisions. The management and day-to-day -day operations of the department are the responsibility of the superintendent. We have policies and procedures in place to resolve concerns and issues. This is a meeting of the Board of Trustees, not a meeting of the public. Prior to this meeting, board members received information related to items on today's agenda. Agenda items will not necessarily be handled in the order listed on the notice. The meeting is open to all who wish to attend and hear the matters discussed. During the course of this meeting, the board may determine that a closed session is necessary. In that event, the board will meet in closed session to consider matters duly posted for this meeting as permitted by section 551.071 to 551.084, inclusive of the Texas Government Code. I respectfully ask that, if, that you please refrain from talking while others are speaking and that cell phones are turned off or on silent mode. Thank you for taking time today to join us and for your interest in the Harris County Department of Education. With that, we will begin with the invocation by uh, Ileana Gonzalez of the Center for Grant Development. Ms. Gonzalez. Good afternoon, board members and Mr. Colbert. We bow our heads. Dear Lord, thank you for the God goodness and mercy that we received every day. We thank you that we have found employment. We are here today to discuss top topics that will move this establishment forward. Come and take center stage in this meeting. Give us new ideas to be able to stand head and shoulders above our competitors. Grant us the wisdom to make this meeting a productive one. Remove any distractions that will make this meeting unproductive. We start with you and we end with you. Thank you, Lord, for the answered prayer. Amen. Thank you, Ms. Gonzalez. And now for the pledge to the U.S. and Texas flags, Charvon Pipkins Kamaya of the Center for Grants Development. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Honor the Texas flag. I pledge allegiance to thee, Texas, one state under God, one and indivisible. Thank you, Ms. Kamaya. Appreciate that. Um, and now we will move on to item four. It's a public hearing on the annual financial management report for FY 2022. I believe that's Dr. Amesqua. We have copies of the presentation and also we have placed copies of the annual report in the front for the public as well and we will be posted on, uh, on our website. The uh, purpose of the uh, school first rating, again, it's not applicable to the Department of Ed, but we do apply uh, some of the uh, fiscal indicators. It ensures that entities will be held accountable for the quality of the financial management practices, improve performance in the management of the resources, and discloses the quality of management, local management and decision-making process that impact the allocation of financial resources, it encourages entities to manage the resources better. This was uh, started back uh, in the 77 legislature in 2001 and has been changed over the years. Every year there's an added adjustment that the legislature makes to the Texas Administrative Code Chapter 109. Um, and so this year we have implemented it for fiscal year 2022. There are some required financial disclosures that are in your report. 
one, the superintendent's current contract, reimbursements for uh, mileage, lodging, meals, and so on, um, and the compensation of any fees received by the superintendent, uh, any gifts valued of $250 or more, any business transactions between HCD and any board member. And so if you recall, uh, we provided you a confirmation last, uh, last month where this was an opportunity to uh, di disclose any, uh, any of such transactions and none were received. There are 20 indicators included in the rating, um, of which 15 are applicable to HCD and 14 uh, were met. Um, uh, was the CAFR completed in a timely manner? The answer is yes. Uh, today you will hear the, uh, the presentation for the annual audit uh, in comparison to last year. It's about a day difference from, from last year. Financial indicator number two was an unmodified opinion in the annual comprehensive financial report. Uh, the answer is yes. You will hear that again from our external auditors uh, in a few minutes. Uh, in comparison to last year, the same uh, um, unmodified opinion um, continues. Financial indicator number three, the department uh, was in compliance with payment terms and all debt agreements at fiscal year end. Um, the department followed all agreements in fiscal year 22 and 21. Did the department make timely payments to the TRS system, the Work for Workforce Commission, the Internal Revenue Service, and other governmental agencies? All payments were made on a timely basis for fiscal year 22 and 21. F uh, financial indicator number five, was the total unrestricted net position balance in the statement of net position greater than zero? And the answer is no, and primarily is because of the impact of the pension liability for on the government-wide financial statements. And so that is, you know, while it is not met, um, it is because of the uh, requirement from the, the estate that we have to uh, record um, in the fin government-wide financial statements that that balance. Indicator number six, was the average change in assigned and unassigned balance over the last three years less than 25% decrease? And did the current year assigned fund balance exceeded 75 days of operational expenditures? The answer to the change was minus 1%. Was the number of days of cash on hand and current investments in the general fund sufficient to cover operating expenditures, excluding facilities acquisition and construction? The answer was yes. Uh, fiscal year uh, 22 was 163, 21 was 193. Indicator number eight was the current assets and current liabilities for the department sufficient to cover short-term debt, and our ratio was six versus last year of, 20, of 16. Did the department's uh, general fund revenues equal or exceed expenditures excluding facility acquisition and construction. And for FY22, 604,000 positive. Last year it was 2.3 million positive. Did the department's average less than 10% variance when comparing to budget uh, revenues to actual? The average was minus 5% for the last three years. Indicator number 11 was the ratio of long-term liabilities to assets for the department sufficient to cover long-term solvency, and the percentage was 62% versus 70% last year. Was the debt, uh, the, ne the next uh, four or five, uh, they're not applicable because we do not have uh, uh, students in terms of uh, uh, school-age children that uh, are reportable to the Texas Education Agency in terms of PIMS. So for indicator number 12, 13, 14, 15, uh, and 16 uh, are not applicable to Harris County Department of Ed. Number 17, did the CAFR not disclose any instances of material weaknesses in internal controls? And again, there was no disclosure, again, the same as uh, 2021. And you will hear the, the final report today from our external auditors. Number 18, did the external independent auditor indicate that the annual financial report was free of any instances of material non-compliance grants, contracts, and laws related to local, state, and federal funds. The audit did not identify any instances of, of material non-compliance of 20, for 22 and 21. So the answer was yes, financial indicator number 18. Number 19, did the department post the required financial information 
in this website in accordance to the government, uh, local government code, uh, Texas Education Code, Texas Administrative Code, and other statutes, laws, and rules. In effect, at the end of the fiscal year, uh, all of them were posted on our website and all our financial information is posted on our website. Number 20, did the department's board members discuss the property values at a board meeting within 120 days before the budget was adopted. Uh, the uh, property values uh, um, were discussed during the year and uh, it was adopted in July the 20th, 2022, uh, where we had the certified value from the appraisal district. That's the information provided uh, and uh, it's a public hearing, uh, so any comments from, uh, from you or the public or any questions that you may have. Any questions for comments from board members or members of the public? <coughs> if not, thank you, Dr. Michael. Thank you. Uh, <coughs> now, item five is our open forum, and I believe uh, um, we had no one sign up to speak unless someone is uh, here to speak. Nope. Okay. Do you want to go ahead and do the audit now? Uh, yeah, you yeah. can. <clears throat> Unless there's a, no, uh, with, if there's no object, objection from board members, go ahead and uh, would like to bring up um, the um, eight item 8-1, which is our presentation on the audit. As required by the uh, uh, Education Code, uh, we're uh, uh, required to have a, an annual external audit, uh, independent audit. Um, Whitley Penn and uh, Selena Ceresetes is the uh, partner in charge, and so I'm going to turn it over to her for the results of the audit. Thank you, Dr. Amesqua. President Gantu, members of the board, and Mr. Colbert, we are here to present the results of the fiscal year 22 audit. This includes both your financial statements as well as your single audit. Uh, as Dr. Amesqua indicated, I, I was the engagement partner. Tom Peterson is the engagement quality control reviewer uh, who's behind the scenes, so he's not part of the engagement team, but he does check our work behind the scenes. Laura Lynch, who's also in the audience, she's the senior manager, and she worked with your management team throughout the entire audit from start to finish. And then Bryce Richmond, a senior. And then we had about three associates that assisted uh, with the audit. I do want to thank your team for uh, being very accommodating, being timely, communicating with us uh, throughout the audit uh, since we started uh, in the summer. Uh, you'll see that our opinions look a little bit different uh, from the past. Uh, this year, the opinion is the first paragraph, where in the past it used to be in the second page or the third page, but now it's on the first page. And just a reminder, the independent audit is not an assessment of your economic well-being, but it is an evaluation of the reliability of the figures presented within. Now, if you're doing well, we'll talk about that. If you're doing poorly, I'll also mention that, but that's not the purpose of the audit. The independent auditor's goal is to provide reasonable assurance versus absolute assurance. No one can do that because there is the element of human error. Um, and we'd have to live with you and test 100% of your transactions to provide absolute um, assurance. So the whole purpose is to make sure that these financial statements can be relied on and that they're free of material misstatement. The audit process started in the summer, even before that in the spring. Then we came on site uh, in the summer months, identified the key controls, uh, tested those controls, not only over financial reporting, but also over your federal programs that we'll see here in a bit that we tested. Uh, in addition to the test of controls, we also looked at compliance testing, Public Funds Investment Act, as well as your uh, procurement with state uh, law. Um, this is in addition to federal procurement and all federal requirements promulgated by the Office of Management and Budget. 
Um, our substantive testing was conducted as the almost the last step, and that was after the, the department closed its books as of August 31st, 2022, and we came back in October, November, and concluded with those procedures so that we can issue our opinions on the financial statements as well as on the federal programs that we tested. So every entity can receive one of three opinions, and they worsen as they move from right to left. Um, and so every entity wants to earn an unmodified opinion, and you'll notice the use of the word earned versus we gave you, right? You earned that uh, opinion. Uh, so you have earned an unmodified opinion. Uh, in addition to the generally accepted auditing standards that we're required to apply in our procedures, we have to also apply an additional level of standards called government auditing standards, and that's because you spend more than $750,000. You spent over $28 million this year in federal funds, therefore we had to apply these additional standards. And it is the, this audit is the highest level of assurance that can be given on a set of financial statements so that outside users can rely on those figures. You did not have any internal controls over financial reporting, meaning no material weaknesses or significant deficiencies. Um, you didn't have any instances of non-compliance either. Uh, so one thing there, you know, I know this has been the case for you all, um, and it seems kind of boring, right? That okay, she's but. These types of reports are better because if you do have material weaknesses, it this does impact. This is not boring. No. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this In is fact, good. you could slow down if you, you could want. You slow down. Okay. <laughs> we'll go slower. We'll talk about it more. But the material weaknesses could impact um, your your however your the rating agencies view you. So it, to have these internal control uh, strengths really helps you with not only your grantors but also your rating agencies. In addition to our external audit, we do get the letters, copies of correspondence from um, those entities, state agencies, and other local governments that actually perform monitoring. So they validate and come to the same conclusion that your controls are strong and that you're complying with the requirements of the, the respective federal programs that you operate. The major federal programs that we tested this year was your Head Start cluster. That makes up $18 million of your of all your federal grants, which were over $28 million. And then County Connections program is part of the new uh, ARPA funding that came from Harris County to the Department of Education. And so we'll see a little bit more of that funding here this year and next year as it's a newer program. And I will say that that program, since it is ARPA, it's considered higher risk, so it was larger. Um, it was over a million dollars and we did have to test it as a major program to uh, make sure that you complied with those requirements. These are the internal control walkthroughs that we performed. So we hit the big four HR, payroll, procurement, and accounts payable. And of course, information technology feeds all of these critical areas. We also look at your service revenues and then your choice partner revenues as well and any other uh, and property taxes. Uh, internal controls are not tested there other than the way you uh, record that because the county does collect on your behalf. And then we also look at each uh, federal program in this year. It was child, uh, not child nutrition, Head Start cluster as well as the county connections uh, program and we looked at those controls and compliance. These are the various tests of controls and compliance that we performed. And so it's just reiterating um, all the various tests that we perform. In addition uh, to the procurement test, we also uh, perform a P-card test um, that's included as part of our procurement test as well in our, in our accounts payable review. On the federal single audit side, uh, you did earn an unmodified opinion for each of those major programs. Uh, and then we also look at all the schedule of expenditures of federal awards to make sure that it does reconcile back to your financial statements and that the, the components of that document actually agree to the financial statements and there's no deviation. And then finally, you don't have any internal control findings, material weaknesses, nor significant deficiencies. And then we also look at your the requirements of the Office of Management and Budget that come from the White House, to and we compare your activity to those requirements, and again, no compliance findings to report here today. Any questions before we get into the financial statement highlights or comments? Okay. In your financial statements, there's two sets of 
in your financial report, there's two sets of financial statements. The first one is your government wide, and these mimic that of a corporation. So it shows everything that the department owns and everything that the department owes. Uh, long, long lived assets and long term liabilities, as well as current asset and liabilities. So the total assets and deferred outflows totaled 175 million. Those were offset by $140 million in liabilities and then also deferred inflows that have to, the deferred inflows and outflows are related to the pension and OPEB uh, liabilities that we'll discuss here in a bit. So overall, the net worth of the department is $35 million. And you did see an increase uh, from last year of, let me get to that of $2.3 million, $2.4 million from the prior year. <clears throat> this is the breakdown of these assets and liabilities, and you'll see that your current assets um, did decrease slightly um, by $11 million, and then your capital assets increased um, significantly as well, and then your long-term liabilities uh, decreased as you're paying down the debt and also uh, even though you issued debt, excuse me, your your pension liability uh, went down by more than half. And that is seen across the state for all participants in TRS. And then your other liabilities are 13 million versus 6 million in the prior year. And here we show that your net position did increase uh, to the $35 million. And just a reminder on those pension and OPEB liabilities, in your annual financial report, uh, the liabilities, uh, the net pension liability was $9.7 million, and in the prior year, it was uh, closer to, let me get to that and not go try to go off my memory, but it was $20.7 million. The reason for that uh, huge decrease was because TRS, the TRS pension, um, experienced very high investment earnings. But if you remember, that is from... We're always a year behind on how we report that. So TRS's year, September 1st, 2020, uh, through August 31st, 2021, is the evaluation period for which we include that liability. So in that year, investment earnings were very positive. Now, from September 1st, 2021, through August 31st, 2022, which will affect your 23 financial statements, you're gonna see something completely different because we know that investment earnings uh, were struggling significantly. But what I did wanna say on these two liabilities, the OPEB liability, uh, which, was, um, which was 23 million this year, those do not represent cash liabilities like an accounts payable or a bond that you have to write a check or wire funds to. This is your proportionate share of the liability that sits at the state. So if TRS were to fail, everybody, everyone would be in the same boat. So again, you're not paying down this liability on your own. What you are going to do is you're gonna to continue to pay at the statutorily determined rates that are set by TRS. And then TRS has to figure out what are we gonna do with this liability? Change benefits? Are we going to increase the rates? Or are we going to fund part of that ourselves with state contributions through a legislative session? So they have options to do that, but you just have to focus on monitoring those rates, budgeting for those contributions into TRS. Any questions before we get into the general fund revenues? Okay. Your total revenues total $52 million, and you'll see that 50% of those revenues, or $26 million, consist of property taxes, uh, with the se uh, second highest level of your fees, and and then the third tuition at seven mil. Excuse me, tuition at 12 million, which is the second highest, and the third highest is your fees for the different uh, programs that you offer. You do have a $3 million on behalf. So that is indicating it's it's what we call a book entry where you record what the what TRS is, is contributing on behalf of your employees. They're doing that on their end, but you have to record that on your books. Um, it does not represent cash revenue. And, and on the off, to offset that, you have expenditures also of $3 million. So it's a wash and has no effect on fund balance. So that's not $3 million of, of cash that is sitting in your bank account. It's simply a recognition of what the state is doing on behalf of your employees. 
Federal funds totaled $2 million, and that includes indirect cost for the most part. And then you have other uh, revenues that, that are $2 million and, and are less than 5%. Your general fund expenditures were less than your revenues, which is what you want, and those totaled $51 million. And you have your specialty school and services uh, at 12.7, with your school-based uh, therapy services at $11.3 million, and then your department-wide at 8.3. And I won't read the the the, the uh, other categories here, but of interest is we've aggregated um, at the bottom the other $8.8 million. Each of those categories are under a million dollars, and we show them here what that includes. If we had included that as part of the graph, it would have been extremely busy, busy busier than this is. But we want wanted you to see um, everything that makes up that $8.8 million in the different categories. The expenditures by object are always important, and you'll see that 72% of the $52, $51 million goes to payroll, and then contracted services uh, totaled uh, $5 million or 10%. Your supplies and materials make up 4%, and then you have your other operating cost at $7 million. When we compare the actual results, results to your budgeted revenues and expenditures, you came under budget by $3 million on the revenue side. And on the expenditure side, your, your exp actual expenditures were less than the budgeted amounts by $6 million. Overall, your fund balance decreased, almost broke even this year uh, by $164,000. Uh, you, the Choice Partners Fund made about $5 million, which is always transferred into the general fund, but then the general fund turned around and um, sent it over to the Head Start Fund and also to uh, pay for debt as well as additional capital projects fund. So it did not sit there. You used it for other operations and other activities throughout the department. When we look at the fund balance of the general fund, which is what rating agencies really focus on, uh, we see that the total uh, fund balance is $26 million. Committed and non-spendable um, is really not available for spending. Part of the committed uh, for you within that $2 million you have, well, the bulk of it, $2 million, is committed by the board. So if you ever need to repurpose that, you can, but it would require board resolution. And then you have a signed fund balance of about $6 million uh, for various things, uh, building and vehicle replacement acquisition, asset replacement, QZAB payments, PFC lease payments, et cetera, that you have coming due. And then finally, you have the unassigned fund balance of $18 million. Those are your actual results. But if we were to project to see how, if we continue to spend at this $50 million level of expenditures, or 51 million, excuse me, what would be required um, or what is a healthy fund balance for you all? So, so 120 days would be about $16 million. And then the, the actual, I think I have that, it should be higher, right? Flipped. Yeah, I'm sorry. It should be high. $18 million is the, the um, 120 days. And then the, um, the optimal should be about 18, 18 million versus your actual 16 million that we had uh, on there. So we had a discussion internally that when you look at your expenditures, even though you have your let me go back to this on the report. You have about 17 million in unassigned, so your actual is actually 17.5, which that's correct. That's correct. This 17.5 uh, uh, rounds up to 18 million dollars. Um, Dr. Amesco was saying, really, it needs to be a little bit higher um, than that. Uh, but at the 120 days, 90 days, we had originally when we met, 90 days is what we look for with the Government Finance Officers Association recommends. Uh, but really, Dr. Mesqua and D Mr. Colbert says we really need 120 days because of the lag of the property tax collections and the payroll requirements that you have in the first quarter of your fiscal year. And for us, the, the first quarter is September through through um, uh, November, and then you don't start collecting the, the, the significant amount of property tax revenues till January. Um, overall, you are healthy. 
any time that you would get into that 30 day 30 day neighborhood or 4.2 million dollars in fund balance that would be um, a danger zone for the department but you're nowhere near that which allows you to uh, repurpose the funds and have that in case you never know what the legislature is going to do uh, but you have that uh, available um, for for your for your needs and it does not mean that you use it for operations but it means it's more for uh, one-time uh, projects that you have in mind dr. Mesco did you want to just add any more to no. the 120 days okay no. okay I have a, I'm confused. I have a couple questions I need okay. you to help me with. Okay. Now, you had mentioned some terms earlier in your slides. I can't remember where it was at, but I'm sure you might be able to recall it off memory. You mentioned something called an unmodified opinion. Yes. <laughs> Can you break it down for us? What is that again? So, an unmodified opinion requires that all of your figures presented in the financial report are materially misstated and connected to that there were no material weaknesses in control sometimes we'll issue a material weakness because the numbers are right but we had to help you get there uh, but we didn't need to do any of that you all have good controls that then leads to accurate figures so the unmodified opinion is a clean opinion which then outside parties that have to review your financial statements can rely on that on these figures here um, that's for the financial statements on the federal side that means that you complied with the requirements of that federal program and we feel comfortable we've done enough work to issue that clean opinion over that those federal programs we tested in the current year so it it sounds like that's the highest standard you can get right that is the highest that is the supreme, cleanest that's supreme, supreme highest. yes <laughs> And how many categories did we get that supreme highest standard in? On all of them. All, all of, of them. them. Yes. <laughs> Don't clap yet. I'm not done. Okay. Um, what did we get last year? Also an unmodified. Okay. And the, the year before, I was here the year before that. What did we get then? Also an unmodified. So Whitley Penn just for context, yes. is the gold standard when it comes to external auditors throughout the entire state of Texas. When a school district gets in financial trouble, TEA calls Whitley Penn. And Ms. Sarah Sarah runs point on all of that. So in your professional judgment, <laughs> with your vast amount of experience and your expertise, would you say that we are the exception you can say you can say the word exceptional. Are we exceptional? You are exceptional. I Bam. Mean. <laughs> That's the title to our convocation. <laughs> well, no, Mr. In all seriousness, we do use. The oh, I'm being very serious. I know. <laughs> I was giggling, so I'm speaking for myself. Um, but we do use the department's policies, even though it's close to 1,800 pages now. But we do Dr. use Mesquite. your policies. <laughs> Um, and we share them with, with entities across the state, not just school districts, but also cities and, and counties. And then they piggyback off of your policies and procedures um, as well. I know that. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hold on now. So you, you have to share our, our best practices, our procedures that our department has put together because we've met this exceptional standard so many times in a row, really ever since you started auditing us to inspire them to meet the standard that we have actualized so many times. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> yeah, yes. <laughs> because we are exceptional, right? You are. <laughs> you can say the word again. Exceptional. Come on. Exceptional. Thank you. <laughs> hey, thank you so much. Great job, Dr. Amesqua, to yeah. you and your crew. Thank you for that uh, exceptional presentation. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you've used the term standard bearers. And yes. 
Yes, that we're the gold standard. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. I love it. Yeah, so I will uh, second that. Uh, great job to Dr. Omesqua and his team and uh, to the administration. Uh, great job on our on our budget and our uh, our financial situation is uh, has always been good. All right, uh, back to the uh, agenda. Oh, we this are is an approval. You need action. Oh, we need a. Okay, so um, with that uh, presentation on the audit, can I uh, uh, we hear a motion to approve our audit? So, Second. Uh, motion made by Trustee Brown, seconded by Trustee Norris. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Passes unanimously. Thank you. Now we will move on to our reports and presentations, beginning with Employee of the Month uh, by Natasha Truitt, our Executive Director of Human Resources. Ms. Truitt. Good afternoon. Now I get to follow an exceptional presentation with information about an exceptional employee. So today we honor an HCDE DIY master craftsman, Mr. Lloyd Compton, a maintenance technician with our facilities division. John Prestigiacomo, director of facilities, says that if you give Lloyd a roll of duct tape, a <laughs> screwdriver, and a pocket knife, he can probably build a car. <laughs> Some of Lloyd's most visible projects are the famed donut wall at Convocation, a safety platform for HVAC workers, privacy windows and human resources, and office furniture in the superintendent's suite. Lloyd has a can-do attitude, and even though he is often called at the last minute to physically make a square peg fit in a round hole, he never says no, and his solutions are almost always successful. Lloyd is committed to excellence in his work. He is the first to arrive and, to, and the last to leave on most projects, always innovating in an effort to do things better and more efficiently. At the ABS uh, East groundbreaking ceremony, Lloyd suggested using mule golf carts to ferry attendants from the parking lot to the ceremony site through mud. He personally drove one of the carts carrying not only people, but video equipment, easels, and shovels before and after the ceremony. He also built a ramp for the elevated platform and figured out how to put the circle of sand on dirt without it sinking due to the viscosity of the mud. Lloyd does not shy away from things he does not know about. Instead, he is an avid researcher, often learning and then mastering new skills as he creates and builds items for HCDE. This was most recently seen with the superintendent's desk and credenza. For this project, Lloyd became a master at stonework, learning how to carve and cut it as he created custom compartments and accessory, find, and accessory fittings for the superintendent's office furniture. This was far outside of his scope of work, but Lloyd does not want to say he can't do something. He will always find a way, even if it means learning how to build something as he's putting and ask if they could have one at convocation. Lloyd created a true conversation starter and one of the centerpieces of the event. In addition, throughout the years, Lloyd has labored to make sure the wall is clean and sanitary, and each year he adds new mechanisms to ensure it will stand straight and not tip over. We've used his donut wall as a candy cane wall, as a potato chip wall, so we get lots of mileage out of Lloyd's creations. Um, Lloyd is considered a critical part of the maintenance team. He acts as a teacher, mentor, coworker, friend, and supporter for everyone in the vision, often being the go-to person for advice. He routinely counsels his coworkers about the best way to approach any given situation, and that typically leads into conversations about how best to approach life. His generosity is unrivaled, and he is always the first to offer help and support. Our comms team created a short video about Lloyd and his can-do attitude.
Anybody who works with him is going to end up learning from him. When I started working here, I was working under Lloyd as a helper to him and from there started learning pretty much everything I know in maintenance from him. My name is Lloyd Compton and I'm a maintenance tech three. Lloyd Compton works in maintenance and operations for HCDE. He's definitely a jack of all trades. He's my go-to man for any problem I might have. He will figure out a way to do it. As a jack of all trades, Lloyd may find himself climbing to great heights to repair a light or designing a donut wall for HCDE gatherings. You would be able to drill your holes. And evidently they were at some conference where there was a donut wall, a smaller version. Next thing I know, I'm getting a call from my boss wanting to know, can we make one? And it's like, yeah, we can make one. How big do we need it? His most current project is repairing a broken filing cabinet. Something he's done a time or two in the 23 years in maintenance. But prior to his life of hammers, drills, and saws, Lloyd was in a world of debits, credits, and deposits. Before coming here, I worked in the banks, worked at a savings and loan, and then a regular bank. We kept transitioning, being bought out. I think it's probably that detail to numbers and what he had to do there and exactness is what he brings to this job. I thought it would be different. It would be a change of pace. They said you're never going to basically do the same thing every day. You're going to be getting out and traveling to different locations and taking care of whatever needs to be taken care of. Not to be stuck behind somewhere and doing the same monotonous thing day in, day out. Like when he was asked to build a new desk for the superintendent. He wanted to know what we could do with his outdated bookcase unit that was basically falling apart, you know, uh, peeling and coming apart. Instead of the typical wood top that he had on there, he wanted to go with a sort of stone. He asked Lloyd if he could put some holes in the desk that would fit his different accessory ports for USBs and electrical stuff. Fast forward an hour and a half later and Lloyd figured out a way to come from underneath the desk and got it right on the money and put in the um, accessories and I mean it was it was beautiful it was great. Most would say Lloyd's work ethic is second to none and he does whatever it takes to get the job done. He's kind of one of a million I mean he loves to come to work he comes to work early lots of times stays late no matter what if the occasion arises he's just a phenomenal worker. I am pleased to introduce Lloyd Compton, our January Employee of the Month. I just want to say that, you know, I've known Lloyd ever since I've worked here. And Lloyd has done, he's done projects that we don't even know he's done. I mean, didn't you do like the little thing in the um, parking garage? You made the little house down there? Yeah, the guard shack. Yeah, the guard shack. Um, but here's what's interesting. I've been here for eight years. 
And Lloyd and I, we normally talk about watches. We always are comparing watches. He's a watch guy. And then when he worked on my office, I learned a part of his skill set that I did not know. I knew he was a guy that's always precise and very particular and meticulous just on how he carries himself. It's always never a hair out of place or anything like that. But then we, we got to this desk project, and, you know, my desk, the whatever you call it, was falling apart, the bookshelf literally falling apart. And so he, Lloyd comes, and we kind of get some ideas and things that we should do, and then we had to find a countertop and decide, well, instead of wood, it would cost just as much to do granite. Let's do a granite. And so then we're sitting there, and we take pictures because we're so proud of all the work that was done. It was like, well, how much granite is left? What are we going to do with all that granite? Lloyd's like, I don't know. we got to find something to do. We had to buy the whole slab. And so I'm sitting on my desk going, huh, maybe it could go on top of this. So my point in telling you this, Lloyd did the desk, but he did something far beyond that that you would have to be so dialed into the details to see what he did because I didn't even see it initially. He made them cut the granite. So there's a line in that granite, and it lines up exactly with the countertop on the cabinet. So it goes from my desk, and it's seamlessly looking like one piece of granite that's just been separated by three feet. Who thinks of that? <laughs> <laughs> Lloyd is a soldier. <laughs> and what I want to tell you is that every month we talk about employees of the month. We get... Our, what is our audit report say? So we unmodified <laughs> opinions and that we are the gold standard and the exception. Even down to our carpenter, that we could stack Lloyd up against anybody if he'd take him out. <laughs> that's, that's, that's how hardcore Harris County Department of Ed is. We just filled with soldiers all over the place. So Lloyd, I love you to death, and you deserve it, and I know you hate getting all this attention, but you've earned that, and no one's given you anything, so thank you so much. All right, next is uh, our report from our superintendent, Mr. Colbert. Thank you, sir. I've got six things to report this month. First, uh, once again, I'd like to recognize and thank our board for their hard work and effort and dedication that they've shown to Harris County Department of Ed, the entity itself, and all the employees, our mission, and their support for me as their superintendent. And so I really appreciate you. I, we've gotten a ton of gifts. Apparently, ABS East and West have had gifts for us up here and um, just some phenomenal things. I think we need to be careful. We're spoiling them. You know, every year they're getting more and more. <laughs> so we need to be careful. But thank you so much, and I appreciate your support. Uh, some important dates here. I've got three of them. Uh, first, uh, February, the February board meeting has, I just want to remind you, it's been moved to the 24th. So it's going to happen on a Friday, not Wednesday. So it's the Friday of the week that we would normally have the board meeting. Um, I'm going to be at a conference presenting, several conferences actually, that week. So I appreciate y'all's understanding and being able to move that board meeting. Next, uh, next Saturday, uh, the Early Childhood Winter Conference. I want to bring your attention to that. Every year we hold this conference. It's one of the largest in the country, certainly uh, the largest in the state of Texas. We have anywhere from 800 to 900, 1,000 educators. It's been virtual for the past two years, I believe, because of COVID. And so uh, we're getting them back in the building. We'll have teachers come from all over the state of Texas, if not the country, different parts of the country that come to this conference. And so uh, that's something that you may be interested in. It will be at Kingdom Builders, where we had our convocation at. Uh, Dr. Rogers, what's the hours? Is it? Is it from 9 to, I, I can't remember. Oh, well, it's going to start in the morning. I've got to do the welcoming there, and um, so you may want to check that out. Um, TASA Midwinter Conference is January 29th through February 1st. That is the largest conference of the year for educators throughout the entire state of Texas. It will happen in Austin. Um, there will be tons of administrators at that conference, um, probably, you know, 
80 to 90 percent of every superintendent principals will be there deputy soups assistant soups very large conference uh, we also have a presence at the conference we have several groups that will be presenting there and um, we have presented consistently there in the past so i just want to make you aware of that i like to give a special uh, recognition and congratulations to trustee norris who has been identified as the trustee of the year for hapsi and so you will be receiving that award i forgot the date February 9th and so uh, congratulations to you once again see we got exceptional board member let's get him a so we'll have folks out there to get photos of that and then I also want to uh, take this opportunity to thank once again and recognize trustee Duhan trustee Hinojosa and trustee Dick who are back you know like I told you all upstairs I got my board back for Christmas and so um, I truly appreciate y'all's leadership and everything that you've done. We make a great team. I mean, it's to the point now that we go to conferences and people are asking the question, do you all always get along this well? Do you all always laugh with one another? And, and so uh, we just have great chemistry as a team of eight. And I, I appreciate y'all, and I'm happy that you're back. With that, that's all I have, sir. Thank you, and congratulations. Uh, Trustee Norris on that uh, recognition, much, much deserved. And uh, next, uh, we'll have our annual division update from the Center for Grants Development. Hello everyone, Happy New Year and Happy Board Appreciation Month. To President Cantu, Superintendent Colbert and others on the dais, I'm Joyce Akins, Director of the Center for Grants Development and I'm pleased and honored to give you this year in review of the Grants Office. First, let's meet the Grants team. <laughs> As you see on the screen, this is a, a picture of us eagerly awaiting the start of the HCDE convocation last August. So you, on the far left, you have yours truly. We also have Ileana Gonzalez, Secretary, Crystal Frazier, Development Associate, Dr. Vita L. Avery, Manager, Charvon Pipkins, Kamaya, Resource Development Specialist, and we are under the team-focused OSIP auspices of Assistant Superintendent Dr. C.J. Rogers. So let's give everybody applause. <laughs> the mission of the Center for Grants Development is to implement diversified funding strategies to help enhance or expand HCDE's programs and services. We do this in several ways primarily through grants and bids, and also by supplementing division's efforts to acquire donations, sponsorships, and volunteers for certain programs, such as CASE's EcoBot Challenge. We also use our skills to assist divisions in special projects, such as scoring writing entries for the Scholastic Art and Writing Competition, evaluating proposals for CASE's City Connections Program, and preparing executive summaries of facility audits conducted by the Center for Safe and Secure Schools. In FY22, we served 10 divisions with a mixture of grant applications, bids, so soliciting donations, sponsorships, volunteers, and special projects that I mentioned previously. Preparing grant applications and bids can be quite involved and requires the support of many HCDE divisions. Starting with the grant staff working closely with the program division, I'd like to acknowledge and thank the divisions that assist us along the way with information, signatures, budget approvals, social media outlets, out, shout outs, and reliable technology for our online submissions. It really does take a village. Here is our CGD dashboard. Thanks to Dr. Avery and Yolanda Pirtle in REI, 
for their assistance in designing our very own customized dashboard. So let's clear the screen. On the top left, we have the number of proposals at 32 for a total of $26 million in grant submissions. In the top middle, it shows the number of grants awarded at 24 for a total of $23 million. So of the 32 grants submitted, we have a 75% success rate. On the top far right, it shows our donations and sponsorships acquired. And on the bottom row, it shows the bids and special projects for other divisions. This is a closer look at the types of grants we submitted. It's a mixture of federal, state, and local, and foundations and corporations. For the grants awarded, Head Start is always the big winner. This year we had continuations as well as the construction projects. Also for Case for Kids, we had the TA 21st Century Cycle 10 Year 5 and Cycle 11 Year 2, and we're currently working on Cycle 12. Adult education was very active this year with almost a million dollars in additional funding beyond the standard HCAG contract. For schools, we had smaller amounts with a gardening project and a summer reading project, but we were still able to have a positive impact on the students. We submitted eight bids this year, mostly for professional development services provided by what is now the Center for Educator Success and also for the Center for Safe and Secure Schools. Bids help the, the divisions become an approved vendor and opens the door for contracts with the districts, such as in Aldean, A-Leaf, Spring, Lamar Consolidated, and Katy ISD. Our big donation this year was from LA Fitness. They provided day and weekly passes for employee incentives. We were also successful in securing sponsorships for the Center for Safe and Secure Schools reunification exercise, therapy services training, and procurement division supplier showcase. We prepared three executive summaries for the Center for Safe and Secure Schools for their work in Spring Branch, A Leaf, and Goose Creek. These summaries consolidate results of numerous facility audits conducted by the Safe School staff. Our other services included reviewing and scoring proposals submitted by submitted to Cases City Connections program and scoring writing entries for the scholastic art and writing programs. Key highlights this year include our work with adult education. We were successful in acquiring Texas Workforce Commission grants. One was for the employer engagement with Merrick Construction and the other for the Family Math Call Center with Sylvan Learning Center. We also collaborated with a local nonprofit to provide adult education services. Another key highlight, we started conversations with Fortis Academy on some of their projects. Here's a photo of Principal Godfrey on the far left, Chef Alvarez, and representatives of the Texas Restaurant Association who will provide guidance on culinary competitions, speakers, and other resources. And we're happy that we've been able to maintain a high satisfaction rate with the divisions. This past year, it was 98%, which means we are by and large meeting all the needs of the divisions. Looking ahead, we want to we support the divisions in strengthening their connections with higher education institutions. Many large federal grants require higher education participation in order to be successful, such as with the U.S. Department of Education or the National Science Foundation. Donor advised funds are becoming more widespread. These are private dollars that are maintained with a community foundation or another entity. We plan to meet with the Greater Houston Community Foundation to see how we can best access these funds. And we're going to revive Discovery Days to help introduce potential funders or collaborators to HCDE programs. So when a division is planning an event such as the grand opening for the new adult ed building, we'll work with them to enhance their guest list and possibly organize VIP activities during the event. In sum, 
the grants office is working in different ways to generate resources to impact HCDE services and the community. What questions do you have? Just yes, sir. I just saw that uh, you guys, looks like you guys did work with 8 million stories, correct? Yes. All yes. right. I just, I, I know uh, the, the, the gentleman that, that runs that program, and I just yes, saw that. I'm glad to see you guys are doing work with them. So very yes. good. For those okay. who aren't familiar, they're, they, they, w they work with at-risk youth, so mm -hmm. very much, uh, very good to see okay. that we're, ha we're, we're participating with that. So thank you. Good deal. Thank you. Mr. Colbert? I'd just like to say our grants department does a fantastic job. Um, they're constantly seeking ways to flank and support the initiatives that we do as an organization, and we're fortunate to have them, I mean, internally. Uh, I absolutely hate writing grants. I've done one, <laughs> and it's painful. And so I'm glad that we have people who love doing grants. <laughs> yes. And so um, they're just, they are I think they're one of our best kept secrets and they're the secret sauce that's gonna hold and really project and actualize the potential of some of the new initiatives that we're getting into. And uh, under your leadership, you've got a tight crew. They work together and love each other. So I appreciate y'all. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, um, item D, uh, any reports from board members concerning attendance, participation, and any board-related, HCD-related events? Mr. President, I, I have a couple quick shout-outs. Um, three, three things, Mr. President. I want to give a, uh, excuse me for a second, y'all know I like to go off on a little tangent, so work with me for a second. Um, the first thing, uh, and I want to say this while he was here, he's not here, but I, I I want to note that when I first became board president, uh, Trustee Dick, Trustee Brian, and, and, were, and I went out with uh, Superintendent Colbert, and he took us around, he took us to High Point, he took us to AB East, AB West, and while we were at AB West, he showed us the new playground, and there is a picture that came from there when I j decided to get turned into a three-year-old and jump on the swing <laughs> and swing across, bless you. Um, and, and I bring that up only to say that, you know, I am a grown man and I know I come up here, but and, and deep down in heart, you see I turn into a big three-year-old when I get on a certain place. And I, I just wanted to give a particular shout-out to Dave because that showed me in my true form. <laughs> as, a true, as a true toddler, I could probably go to uh, end up at, I'm glad they didn't keep me there when I was there because I turned into a big toddler. But, but, uh, but I did want to give a shout-out because that, that is the kind of excellence. I guess that's the thing for, the, for this board meeting. It's excellence that I like uh, that we do. Also, uh, I also want to give a particular shout-out. When I, when I gave a shout-out to uh, Director Andrews, a couple of people stopped me afterward and said, well, we expect to see some great stuff in January because uh, there are some other members of our administration who are in, in members of uh, sororities and fraternities. Dr. Keyes, thank, uh, he, who, who gave me a shout out on our video, he and I, he and I just celebrated 112 years uh, on January 5th <laughs> in Kappa Alpha Psi. Uh, 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 for the, uh, members of, of Phi Beta Sigma, they made 109 this year on January 9th. Ms. Waters and Director Truitt made 110 years on January 13th, and they're members of Delta Sigma Theta. <laughs> Director Ross made 115 years on January the 15th, and on January 16th, Zeta Phi Beta made 103 years. So shout out to all of the members of the sororities and fraternities that I talked about a lot more in depth on November. I won't go this long, I promise you. Um, and uh, I also, my third point, I want to make a, a particular note. Uh, on, a more, on a more serious note, I, I want to inform you, if you're on my social media, you probably saw this already. I had a recent breakup uh, with uh, a particular close lady in my life. Her name was Sally Mae. Um, so before you get all nervous, everybody, got, you know, people got nervous. They, no, uh, me and my wife are good. Don't worry about that. So <laughs> I only, and I only bring up this just to say that uh, I, uh, and we broke up recently because I got a, a public student loan forgiveness because I work for, I like a lot of people here have worked for the government for a lot of years. And I only bring that up to say if you have not applied, please do. Uh, go, go visit Director Truett's office. If you have not submitted your application, I promise you it feels great. I looked at the letter for a couple of times like, wait a minute, is that saying it right? Did it sound forgiven? I'm delivered. Uh, so <laughs> if you have yet to be delivered, I know a lot of you, I, I go to a lot of the awards and see that a lot of you guys have been working here for a lot of years. So please, if you have not applied and if you have any, 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 uh, any subsidized loans, please apply and get forgiven. That's it. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mr. President. I'll turn it back over.
that trustee Norris uh, any other board members trustee Brown um, I would like to point out that since we're talking about being exceptional I wore my wristband that says be exceptional what a coincidence right <laughs> and and also um, we had a uh, policy council meeting yesterday with Head Start, and I wanted to uh, touch on a few things we talked about. Um, we were working on trainings to ensure that our staff is prepared. So again, we got to be exceptional so we can uh, represent HCDE in the right way. And also, we're, uh, mental health is important. So we're, we want to make sure everybody mental health is, is OK, more than OK, because you know it's 2023. Don't, don't get too crazy out here. And um, I'm real big on positivity, so, you know, we want to spread more positivity and eliminate the negatives. Negativity spreads like a cancer, so, you know, we want to uh, increase the positives. And also, hold on, I got some more notes. I'm getting like Danny. <laughs> Again, speaking of being exceptional, we got to shout out the Head Start now. Come on. So, um. During the uh, folk, we had two federal reviews. So we had eight content area data tours. Uh, we reviewed 143 individual eligibility child files, uh, visited and explored six centers, and also 18 classrooms, interviewed 18 lead teachers, uh, conducted a parent interview well, with both current uh, Head Start families, and uh, conducted two governing body interviews, which included uh, President Cantu and myself. We also conducted five daily uh, touch points with our director. We held a boat, uh, held an, uh, an opening and closing sessions with management staff, and also uh, daily contacts with multiple staff by email, text, follow-up interviews, phone calls, and file uploads. I said I'll let to say, uh, there were no findings, so congratulations to the Head Start policy team. Uh, but I also like, no, I'm just playing, y'all. That's it. That's it. All right. Thank you for that, Trustee Brown. If there's no other reports, we will move ahead um, to the next item. Uh, any reports from uh, board committees? Years. If not, we will move on to our monthly financial report, Dr. Amesqua. These are the financial highlights as of December th 31st, uh, 2022. Um, all our information is on our website. Um, we'll also review the uh, budget amendment report. The uh, balance sheet as of December 31st, we have assets of 27,900,383, liabilities of $2,413,009, and equity of $22,909,274. As we um, uh, get the fund balance from our external auditors, we will update the uh, beginning fund balance uh, so you will see an adjustment in the next presentation in the, in the month of uh, February. So for FY23, um, our uh, excess uh, deficiency between revenues and expenses were 431690 uh, primarily because our tax monies are coming in until the month of uh, December, um, late December and early January. Our indicators uh, ratios for financial strength, uh, percentage of fund balance to, to ex uh, expenditures ratios, uh, we're at 102% versus 70% at the same time last year. Working capital ratio, we're at 25 million. Um, a little bit more than, than a year ago, 24 million uh, tw for 22. Our uh, um, un uh, unassigned fund balance ratio um, in terms of uh, reserves, 66% versus 47% at the same time last year. Debt to income ratio, 0% uh, uh, 
5.5 percent uh, last year. Uh, we will have our first payment um, coming up in uh, in uh, in February. Tax revenue to total uh, revenue, uh, we're at uh, 24 percent versus 30 percent. Um, indirect cost uh, to tax ratio were 3.4 versus 3 percent from from a year ago. Uh, fee for service ratio we're at 27.5 versus 24 uh, percent from a year ago, and 26 uh, percent our revenues uh, expand versus uh, last year that we were at the same time at minus 21 percent at uh, last year uh, in in the month of December. Our um, Budgeted activity um, from September to January, we had amendments uh, of uh, two million five hundred seventy-eight thousand one hundred, uh, and we'll have uh, another amendment here in the, in a few minutes. Our inflows or revenues, we have uh, sixteen million one hundred eleven thousand seven hundred seven in the general fund. Total uh, uh, budget to actual of twenty-five percent. Um, this is the fourth month, so we are at 33%, again, primarily because our tax revenue has not come in yet. It will come in in the month of January. In terms of expenditures, uh, we're in line with uh, 33%. We're actually at 30% uh, budget to actual, uh, and overall budget to actual, um, we're at 41%, primarily because of our capital projects that we're spending our, our capital projects fund. Uh, COVID uh, disaster relief funds available in the general fund, uh, $1,182,240. Uh, Head Start, uh, $1,649,846. Uh, donations uh, received uh, uh, were for the month of December, $11,573.57. Uh, primarily for Head Start and also some uh, uh, Apple iPads uh, we receive from T-Mobile. Um, in terms of uh, the uh, values as of December, we're at 582 billion. We still have 2.5 billion uh, yet to be uh, certified uh, for the projection of 585 billion for for the rest of the year. Um, again, year to date, the current tax we're at six six million two hundred and six uh, two hundred sixty eight thousand three ninety five. The bulk of that revenue is going to come in in the month of January, and so this number you will see that in the eighty to ninety percent uh, threshold in the month of January. Year to date collections we're at twenty three percent versus twenty seven percent at the same time last year, and our disbursements for the month. Uh, on the average is 4.8 million. Uh, we talked about during the, during the presentation for the auditors that we spend on an approximately four million dollars, four and a half every month. So you multiply that times four months, that's how much you have to have in cash available in order to make it through, through to the fall before the taxes uh, come in. So 4.8 million was spent in December, uh, for the month of December, 377 uh, transactions, um, uh, 657 uh, PICA transactions, 65 transfers, um, and so a total of 4,803,207. Uh, in terms of our segment data information, records management at uh, benefit variance 328,426. Um, they run about 30 days behind because of the billing cycle when it closes. Uh, therapy services at uh, 1,008,297, and schools at subsidy of 1,000,000. 855,348. Choice Partners uh, continues at currently at a ratio of, of, of 186%. So um, transfers to the general fund of 1,365,145 as of December. Budget amendments. Um, the first one is uh, Head Start. Uh, this is uh, for uh, provide uh, the funding for the $15 a minimum wage for Head Start, $421,664. Uh, high ponies, $8,000 for some uh, food purchases for students, $8,000. Um, and then uh, we have uh, AB West uh, for um, safety projects for uh, doors, $153,000 uh, transfer for, for the ABS project. 
In terms of the educational foundation, we have net equity of 412293 um, Activities, uh, we had revenues of 23000 Expenditures, uh, $928 uh, auditing fees uh, for the month of December. I'm not going to go through all the detail. So here are the amounts that we have available in the uh, in the foundation, uh, after school initiative, ECOBOT, adult ed, uh, support services, energy for the future, dollar general, partners in education, and the amounts are available are $412,293. Our lease revenue projects update, uh, continue with uh, a small uh, business program for construction. And so year to date, we have uh, total CIP uh, left over 27 million 650,972, of which uh, maintenance notes are 12,223,899, million two hundred twenty-three thousand eight ninety-nine, and uh, amounts from the PFC are fifteen million four hundred twenty-seven thousand and seventy-three dollars. We're at uh, committed and encumbered, ninety-nine percent of AB East, forty-four percent of Irvington, ninety-seven percent of Hypon East, ninety-four uh, percent on adult ed building. So. We've spent year, um, year to date about 85% of our, or committed 85% of our, of our funding. Uh, for the Irvington project, we have $10,791,818 as of December uh, 31st, 2022. And that's the report for the month of December. What questions do you have? Yes, sir. Uh, one of the, just speaking to, uh, uh, Attorney Lingua earlier, one of the things that we uh, talked about, uh, I guess a couple months ago, when when the county talked about their um, their MWDEB study, MWDBE study, uh, is that we have our small business program. And I know you've given me a report before, but mm -hmm. one of the discussions we've even had is possibly having a report that we could even submit, even possibly to the county and or whoever, just to say this is what we have done on that particular. I, and I wasn't sure if we. We got a chance to talk to either um, either your department about that, but the whole idea is that if we're if we're doing a, the, our program and, and we did it for this specific sure. reason um, to to make sure that we did have more opportunities for for different community members to participate in our 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 our, pro, our, our participate in our capital projects. Um, okay. So I I just wasn't sure uh, if you know if we had that discussion or what what can be done in that regards. I I guess I just thought it would be. Uh, so you want a report of uh, the local construction participation? Yes, and and, and the, the small business program specifically, because okay. because the point one of the one of the reasons that we said you know one of the reasons that you know, before spending more money on an a MWEBD study, which is required uh, before you can actually do things specifically for it, uh, I thought the whole purpose of us saying, well, we have a small business program, and and these are our numbers specifically. Uh, that that achieve a, a lot of those objectives. So I think that that was kind of both both internally, but also potentially to even share with the the county to say, you know, uh, great if, if the study works, great. Uh, but th this is what this is what we have, and these are our numbers, and this is kind of you know another alternative for okay. other county pro other governmental okay. entities around the county as well to consider. Okay, well uh, we'll provide a summary report of of all the current projects that we have. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Trustee Norris, I think that's a great idea because we, through you, initiated that uh, program uh, before the county commissioner's court was talking about it. And so I think it's important okay. to, uh, to note that, but especially to, to share that with the, with the public and other government entities to, um, you know, just so that it's clear that we're not responding or reacting. Uh, we were, we were uh, essentially ahead of the curve. So. Thank you for your leadership okay. on that. The uh, second report is the investment report. Um, all our uh, information is posted on our website. Um, again, uh, the um, the uh, PFC Corporation uh, has a portfolio of ten million uh, five hundred eighty-two thousand. Work. Uh, 582958 
um, and uh, PF uh, HCD of 46 million 321,993. Uh, Lone Star, we have 43% there. Uh, Texas Class, 20%. Texas Star, 10%. And Texas Pool, 23%. Uh, for the uh, PFC portfolio, 98% uh, in Texas Pool and 2% at Bank of Texas. Uh, when you compare uh, the portfolio from a year ago, we have spent 19474226 from that, or 25% of the portfolio. And so we have left over now uh, 56904950 All our funds are o overnight at this time and earning uh, as our rates continue to climb. Uh, Year-to-date earnings for ACD has been uh, 452625 and uh, PFC $141,005. We're earning uh, average 4.02, uh, yield of 4.46. And here's a history that you see how the rates have been climbing and continue to climb, and we're at basically in a position to be able to take advantage of that uh, uh, interest rate uh, climbing uh, rates at this time. Okay. And those are the the rates that are available in the pool, 4, 4.5, uh, uh, 4.3, so in that range. So you start seeing those climbing into the 5% threshold here in the, in the, in the new, uh, in, the, in, the, in the spring, rather. Those are the uh, presentation for the investment report. What questions do you have? Nope. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mesqua. I believe it's um, now to the uh, item seven, the uh, action items or consensus. Uh, are there any? Oh, got to do these. Oh, you have some announcements? Yes. Go ahead. We actually have the what I call the triple crown. Um, uh, we received the Government and Finance Officers Association for the ACD budget, fiscal year 22-23. Also, the Meritorious Award for uh, Excellence in uh, Preparation and Issuance of the Budget from the uh, Association of School Business Officials. And the uh, Certificate of Award of Excellence for Government Finance Officers Association for the annual CAFR for 2021. So those are three. I have our staff here. I'd like to recognize them because they're the uh, backbone of where the, all those reports and presentations and the audit and so I'd like for them to uh, to stand and then we have hopefully that you can uh, um, show up if you will some of those awards and we have a token of appreciation to the board because superintendent and the board uh, is what uh, supports uh, being able to provide uh, this uh, or, or earn some of these uh, some of these awards so the staff And so we uh, got some uh, patches for you and some uh, uh, jacket that you can uh, uh, show off to other members uh, of the board. Did, did you get my choir patch and put that on there? Uh, we were studying that. The two patches that you have are from the Texas Association of School Board, uh, School Business Officials. Um, one is for purchasing, and the other one is for uh, performance in financial management. And so that was for 2022, so the 23 is coming. <laughs> That's awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Any
Any other awards? No, thank you. <laughs> We're good. First, we had an exceptional audit, and now three awards in a row. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, triple crown. Ooh. These look awesome. Thank you. Okay, now <clears throat> we're ready for the consensus. Uh, <clears throat> uh, pardon me. Any uh, any items that any board members want to take out of order? Uh, here are none. I, I do have one. I want to pull the uh, E two. <clears throat> There are no others. Uh, I'll entertain a motion to uh, approve the consensus agenda. A motion by Trustee Davis. Second. Second by Trustee Norris. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Now, um, on E2, if we can get a. So moved. A presentation on that or an oh, explanation? Oh. Yeah, yeah. So we got a motion by Trustee Norris, second by Trustee Davis. Um, discussion? I'd like just to get an overview of what this, uh, these inner locals entail. And Which one? What questions do you have? <laughs> oh, E2. You want an explanation? Oh. oh, those are the uh, interlocal agreements. Oh, what interlocal, what, what they actually uh, entail? Yeah. It's a government to government. Can I, an interlocal is basically, uh, we refer to them as ILA also. It's a government to government agreement or, and also uh, that allows uh, it, the, the other governments to piggyback off of the contracts that Choice Partners writes. And within the state of Texas, they're all uh, required to execute a, a, a document uh, stating that they're going to uh, use the contracts outside of the state of Texas. There's an option to use it or not. So it looks as though uh, all of them are within Texas for this month. I don't know if that helped. That's, yeah. oh, so I'm it's, sorry. It's basically I thought, just. I thought, I thought, I thought it was your <coughs> question, Eric. Sorry. Yeah, so it's just participation in, in choice partners. Right. Correct. There's there's no uh, there's no expiration date. There's no cost. There's no nothing whatsoever. It's just a legal document that allows them to use our contracts, all the contracts that we write. That's how we gather the fees. They've got to have that executed to work with choice partners. All right, and you have to be a government entity in order to participate. We have not for profits also no, that are no we profit. just can't have anything for profit. Okay. Okay. All right. Thank you so much. We had a motion and a second. Any other discussion? If not, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Right. Now for uh, non-consensus uh, agenda items, starting with 8-1. Uh, number two, consider award of CSP 23 slash 01 OKJ construction manager at risk services for the Irvington renovation project to Durotech Inc. So moved. Motion. Motion by Trustee Norris. Second, Second by Trustee Dick. Dick. Um, any discussion? Um, the uh, item uh, needs to say RFP instead of CSP uh, 2301KJ. So just to be clear, it's a consider award of RFP 23010KJ for construction manager at risk services for the Irvington renovation project to Durotech Inc. And we had a motion and a second. Uh, any other discussion? Um, I have a couple of questions. Uh, how many um, how many 
proposals or presentations did we have for this project? I believe we had nine, nine proposers that came up that uh, did the soliciting for the RFP. So um, and we that's the evaluation committee was consisted of myself, Dr. Mesqua, uh, procurement services, as well as Joe Kitty on the director of construction. And those, those so there were uh, the nine proposers actually did in person pr presentations. They submitted their proposals through through the iron wave, as like they're uh, supposed to, and then of course we opened opened it up or opened the bids at that time, uh, and then went, and then did the and once we did that, then we cre we created our evaluations from that point forward. Okay. All right. So um, Duratech is was the was the lowest bid or they they came in they went based on the value of points they came in. Uh, better than the uh, second proposer, um, and I, I do not recollect that second proposer who was behind behind them. Um, Joe, who you remember who that was? Yes, sir. Uh, it was a competitive. I mean, the proposers that came in to that bid were actually, I mean, very, you know, they're big in the Houston area. Yeah. Uh, so we had uh, Sterling, Sterling, I believe. We had uh, Duratech. Um, so Some we had, others. We had Dirt, Flint Cove, Flint Cove, Paradigm, Sterling, Par Telepson, and Turner. Yeah, uh, Paradigm, Telepson, and Turner was also some of the bidders. They were one of the top fours in there. Okay. And so the the selection was based on price and. Which There's a there were other uh, points that were oh, in the uh, in the evaluation. Um, There's the financials. Uh, what else is there? the experience of the proposers uh, you had the quality of the proposer services and I believe we had the again the financial capabilities of the proposer as well in uh, small business participation yes that is that was part of it down here as well there's there's points allocated for that all right so after all that the committee recommends Durotech yes sir all right very well thank you any other discussion not all those in favor signify by raising your right hand motion passes unanimously <clears throat> item three consider approval of the project delivery contract delivery method of job order contracting and approval of JOC contract with quality security systems uh, this is choice partners RFP 21021 MJ 31 so move motion by trustee Norris Second by Trustee Dick. Any discussion? If not, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Number four, consider approval of change order number one to job order contract with quality security systems for Humble Head Start Center access control, fire alarm, security, and camera equipment project. Second. Um, motion by Trustee Brown, second by Trustee Norris. Any discussion? If not, all those uh, in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Yeah, all right. Uh, so it is now 2.53, and the board will um, um, recess into executive session under Texas Government Code pursuant to any and all purposes permitted by sections 5510.001-551.084, uh, including but not limited to 551.071 and 551.074. Really? I was just thinking I needed something. <laughs> it's uh, 332 and the Board of Trustees of the Harris County Department of Education is now reconvened and and we will uh, item 10a consider approval of change order number one to contract 
with Sovereign Builders, Inc., doing business as Construction Limited for the ABS East Campus Project. So moved. Motion by Trustee Norris. Seconded. Second by Trustee Duhon. Any discussion? Not. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Motion passes unanimously. Discussion of possible uh, item 11. Any discussion or possible action on regarding future agenda items? Anybody? I would like to take just one moment that this is not necessarily a future agenda item, but we just want to say a big congratulations to all of the awardees of the Case for Kids Youth Summer and After School programs. These are the people that are in the field doing the real work, putting their heart into everything. And I am just incredibly proud of these organizations for all of the work that they're doing. And I just want to say congratulations to them. Here, here. Yeah. <laughs> all right, I think everything else is uh, information items. Uh, so I will uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Motion by Trustee Norris, second by Trustee Brown. Any discussion? Not all those. Raise your right hand. In favor? Motion passes. We are adjourned. Thank you very much.